truth for life. August 7th. We need a miracle. You have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass, wiz grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23-25 the gospel is not an exhortation to well-meaning people, inviting us to add a little religion to our lives. God's word comes to the rebel heart and commands obedience. It is a word that brings the dead to life. How is this work accomplished? Only by God's spirit. It is the spirit's work to achieve what cannot be done in any other way, by any other means, to bring about new life. By nature, we are all rebels against God. No one seeks after him. Romans chapter 3 verse 11. Even if I call myself an agnostic or a seeker or open-minded, in reality I am rebelling. And God commands all people everywhere to repent. Acts chapter 17 verse 30. God calls every one of us to do an about turn to turn decisively from sin and rebellion and to come under his rule. Apart from a miracle, we cannot do this. Left to ourselves, we are dead and without hope for eternity. Thankfully, it is the very task of God's Spirit to perform that miracle for us. New life is something God achieves, not something we engender. The Spirit convicts us of sin and convinces us that Jesus, by his death on the cross, has dealt with it. Scripture is absolutely clear on this. When we were dead in our sins, we were made alive in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The Spirit brings us to understand what, by ourselves, we are unprepared to face. Namely, that we have a deep endemic problem we cannot fix. We need a miracle. And that's what God does. He brings about new life. He saves us by his grace. Everything about us fades like the grass, Peter reminds us. All of us will one day fall, but there is a seed which produces that which is imperishable, which is planted in us by the Spirit, and which will bloom and thrive for all eternity, the life that has been born anew through the gospel. The word of God remains forever, and so does the one who has been brought to new life as the Spirit works through it. Once that has happened to us, we, are no, we no longer see the Bible merely as some history book or inspiring story. By the work of the Spirit, it becomes a light, illuminating true life. And our eyes are opened to understand who God is. This is why we study the Bible, to better see and know the one who has saved us and with whom we will spend eternity. So may the love of Jesus draw you to him. May the joy of Jesus enable you to serve him. May the peace and contentment that comes in knowing Jesus grant to you stability and clarity as you reflect on where you've been, consider where you are, and meditate upon where you are headed. Your earthly flesh will fall, but you will remain forever. Psalm chapter 119, verses 65 through 80. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The insolent smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their heart is unfeeling like fat, but I delight in your law. 
It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you shall see me and rejoice, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your rules are righteous, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let your steadfast love comfort me, according to your promise, to your servant. Let your mercy come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the insolent be put to shame, because they have wronged me with falsehood. As for me, I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me, that they may know your testimonies. May my heart be blameless in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame.